So in this video, we're going to look at the limit superior and the limit inferior. And the main aim of this video is going to be to show that when the limit superior exists, that it is the largest, the maximum of the limit points for the sequence. And when the limit inferior exists, that it is the minimum, the smallest of the limit points for the sequence. We will initially revise the definitions of the limit superior and the limit inferior. We introduced these earlier in the playlist on real analysis in the video on the bolzano wierstrass theorem, but we will recap the definitions because we haven't really used them again since then. And we'll, I'll, revi I'll remind you of the proof that there is always a subsequence of the whole sequence that converges to the limit superior if it exists, and there's always a subsequence that converges to the limit inferior if it exists. Therefore, if they exist, they are the limit points of the sequence. And then we'll show that if they exist, if the limit superior exists, there cannot be a subsequence of the sequence that converges to something bigger than it, i.e. there cannot be a bigger limit point, and if the limit inferior exists, that there cannot be a subsequence of the original sequence that converges to something smaller than it, i.e. that there cannot be a limit point that is smaller than it. So let's begin by reminding ourselves of the definition of the limit superior and the limit inferior, starting with the limit superior. So let's say that we have a sequence here, which we'll call an. So here is our sequence written out, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, a6, etc. And the limit superior for this sequence, denoted thus lim sup as n approaches infinity of the sequence a n, is actually the limit of another sequence that I'll call s n, big S n, and this new sequence is going to be defined thus. Each term in this sequence is the supremum of a set, and you take the set of all the things from the original sequence such that you take all the terms that are greater than or equal to n. So to make this concrete, if we were to write this sequence out, we'd start off with the first term, which would be s1. So I've written out some of the first terms of this sequence s, s1, s2, s3, s4. s1 here, the way you get that number is you'd go to your original sequence and you'd take every single term from the sequence, you'd put them all into a set, and then you'd take the supremum of that set, and that would be then um, the term S1. For you to be able to do this, therefore, the sequence, the set of all the terms in the sequence has to therefore have a supremum, has to have a least upper bound. And therefore, it's going to have to be bounded above. If it weren't bounded above, then it certainly isn't going to have a least upper bound because it has no upper bound. So your sequence, in order for the limit superior to exist, will need to be bounded above. Otherwise, this whole definition doesn't work. So if our, let's assume then that our sequence is bounded above. Those sequences have a chance of the limit superior existing. However, there is still a possibility that this won't actually work, that this limit, that this sequence won't converge to something, but it must be bounded above for you even to be able to define this sequence in the first place, for these suprema to even be defined. So our sequence needs to be bounded above, so S1 is going to be the supremum of the set of all terms of the sequence, then when you go to this next term along, S2, you take the supremum of a slightly smaller set, you now want all the terms in the sequence such that their index is greater than or equal to 2 now. So that means you get rid of the first one. So you've got rid of this, and now you're just interested in all the other terms, the supremum of them. And then you go on. So the third term would be the supremum of all the things in the sequence bar the first two terms. So i is greater than or equal to 3 now, and so on. So the limit superior is really this limit of this sequence of supremums. It's the limit of the supremums, if you like. So just to give a nice simple example. If we take as our sequence this sequence that alternates between 1 and 0, so 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and it continues on like that forever. So if we construct its S sequence, so in this first entry here we're going to want the supremum of the set of all the entries here, but that set is just the set that contains 0 and 1. Those are the only two things in the sequence, and the supremum of that set is 1, so we'll put a 1 there. Then when we go to the second entry, we'll want the supremum of everything bar this first term here. But of course, that's still the set that contains 0 and 1, so it'll still be 1. And you can see that 
uh, no matter how far you go along, your set of terms here, because there's only two things in the sequence, zero and one, and they continue on forever, you're always just gonna have zero and one in this set. So you're always gonna be taking the supremum of the set zero, one. So you're gonna get the answer one. Uh, which is the least upper bound of that set. So it's just going to be a sequence, a constant sequence, one, 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 and this is going to be a convergent sequence. It converges to one, and therefore the limit superior of this set would be one. And you can see that this sequence has two limit points. It has the limit point zero and it has the limit point one. You have two subsequences uh, that partition this sequence, one subsequence that consists of all the zeros and one subsequence that consists of all the ones, and both of those converge to zero and one respectively. So those are the two limit points, and those are the only two limit points of this sequence. And you can see that the limit superior here is finding the biggest of the limit points for that sequence. Another example to build your intuition for this idea, let's take this sequence now. The sequence A is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, minus nine, you get the idea going off to uh, minus infinity. So this is a uh, non-convergent sequence, or at least it doesn't converge to a finite limit. Now, this is a good example because it is an example where the limit superior is not going to exist, but the problem isn't that the sequence isn't bounded above. This sequence is bounded above by zero, for example. So you can construct all of the supremums that you need for the sequence Sn, um, but this still isn't going to work because overall this sequence isn't going to converge to a finite limit. So I, I've brought this example up to demonstrate that finding this limit superior can go wrong in multiple different ways. Either it can go wrong at the first stage, i.e. you can't even construct this sequence Sn because the sequence isn't bounded above, or it can go wrong for other reasons, and this is an example where you can construct that sequence, but it doesn't actually converge to something finite. So here, if we consider finding the S sequence, so for this first term, we'll want the supremum of all the terms of the sequence, but you can see that the supremum of that is going to be minus one. Minus one is the maximum of that set of all the terms in this sequence, so it's the uh, least upper bound. So minus one will be the supremum of the entire thing, and it will be the first entry there. Then when we go to the second one, we'll want the supremum of everything from here onwards, so get rid of that one. But now we've got a set where the maximum is minus two, so that will now be the least upper bound, so the supremum will be minus two. And you can see how this is gonna go on. When you go to the third one, you'll want the supremum of everything from here onwards, and therefore it'll be minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. So in fact, you'll, you'll get the exact same sequence back again as your S sequence. And now when you try and take the limit of this sequence of supremums, you have a problem because this doesn't converge to a finite limit. So even though this sequence is bounded above, it doesn't necessarily mean it has a limit superior. Now you might be tempted to conclude from the example that I've just given you that maybe the problem is that this isn't bounded below. So we knew that the sequence had to be bounded above for us to be able to find this limit superior. Maybe actually the reason this one went right and this one went wrong is because this one was bounded below by minus one, for example, whereas this one is unbounded below. It's going off as far as you liked in the negative direction. Maybe that was the problem, but that's not quite necessary. Indeed, when we come on to the limit inferior, which is the same idea but from the other side, it will be necessary for the sequence to be bounded below in order for the limit inferior to exist. But actually, the limit superior existing, you just need to, it to be bounded above. That's the absolute criterion. But actually, you can come up with examples where it's not bounded below and still has a limit superior, and that's what I've got here. So it's the same sort of thing, except that now I'm going to alternate between this sequence that's going off to minus infinity and a constant sequence, which is zero. So I've got this sequence minus one, zero, minus two, zero, minus three, zero, minus four, zero, minus five, zero, minus six, zero, minus seven, zero, etc. And this sequence is going to have a limit superior, even though it's not bounded below. You'll notice it is still bounded above, it has to be bounded above, otherwise the limit superior, we can't even do this sequence of SNs. But, um, so it is bounded above, but it's not bounded below, and yet it is still going to have a limit superior. So being bounded below isn't a necessary criterion in order to have a limit superior. Being bounded above is. So, let's think about creating this sequence SN 
for this sequence here. So S1 will be the supremum of this entire set. You can see zero is the maximum entry in that set, so it'll be zero. And then go along, S2, we now want from this term onwards, you can see zero is still the maximum entry in that set, so the supremum will still be zero. S3, this term onwards, the supremum of that set, you'll see zero is still in there and it's still the maximum. So this is going to continue on forever because the zeros continue on forever in this sequence. So they'll always be inside this set being the maximum inside it. So this sequence of supremums is just going to be the constant sequence zero, 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 which is convergent to zero and therefore the limit superior of this sequence is zero. And you can see that this sequence does indeed have a subsequence, the subsequence of zero, 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 that converges to zero and that that is a limit point for this sequence and indeed it is the maximum limit point of this sequence. So that's the main aim of this video indeed to show that whenever the limit superior does exist, that it is the maximum of the limit points of the sequence. And whenever the limit inferior exists, that it is the minimum of the limit points of that sequence. And for these two examples, they are not bounded below, so the limit inferior isn't going to exist. This one, the limit inferior does exist, and indeed it will be zero, and we'll see the limit inferior now. So limit inferior is exactly the same idea, but on the other side. So lim inf is how we denote limit inferior, as n approaches infinity of our sequence a n, it again is going to be the limit of another sequence and now this new sequence is going to be found by taking infima rather than suprema but of the same set. So we want the limit as n approaches infinity of this i sequence and the way we define each one of the terms in this sequence i1, i2, i3, i4 etc is as follows, i n is going to be the infimum so the greatest lower bound of the set of all things from the original sequence where you are interested in all the terms from the original sequence that are greater than or equal to the n. So when you look at the first term in this sequence, you're going to take the infimum of the set of all terms of the sequence. When you look at i2, you want all of the ones where the term is greater than or equal to 2, so it'll be everything but the first term in the original sequence, exactly the same as we did when we were doing limit superior. Now, of course, for these greatest lower bounds, these infima to exist, the sequence needs to be bounded below. If it isn't bounded below, then it has no lower bound, so it certainly doesn't have a greatest lower bound. So, just like for the lim sup, you needed the sequence to be bounded above for it to be exist to exist. That was a necessary criterion for the limit inferior. The sequence being bounded below is a necessary criterion. Otherwise, you can't even define this sequence of infima that you need to look at whether it converges in order to find this limit. Again, let's look at some of the examples. So let's go back to this sequence of 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and let's think about its limit inferior. So if we want to create the sequence of infimums, let's start with this first term here, i1. So we'll want the infimum of the set of all terms of this sequence. Well, that's the set containing 0 and 1. 0 is the minimum of that set, so the infimum there is 0. When we go to the second one along, we want the set from this term onwards. Well, that's still the set that contains 0, 1, so its infimum is still 0, and so on. No matter how far you go along, the set that you are taking the infimum of will always contain 0 and 1, and therefore the infimum will be 0. Therefore, this sequence is just going to be the constant sequence of all zeros, and therefore, that converges, so the limit inferior by definition is therefore zero. And again, you can see the limit superior of this was one, the limit inferior of this was zero. Those are actually the only two limit points of this sequence, and you can see that the limit inferior corresponds to the smallest of them, and the limit superior corresponds to the biggest of them. For these two examples, as we've already discussed, they are not bounded below, and therefore they do not have limit inferiors. This one doesn't have a limit inferior or a limit superior, therefore this one has a limit superior but it doesn't have a limit inferior. Now let's look at an example of a sequence that is bounded below but doesn't have a limit inferior and it's the reverse of this example here which was bounded above but didn't have a limit superior. So we've got the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you get the pattern. 
And if we think about trying to take the limit inferior of this, so the first term here is going to be the infimum of the set of all terms of the sequence. Well, that's the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the natural numbers. It has a minimum, which is 1, so that's the infimum, so we'll put 1 there. Then for the second term, we want the infimum of this set, so everything apart from 1, all the natural numbers apart from 1. That has a minimum again, and that minimum is 2, so the infimum there is 2, and so on. Uh, for this one, we'll want 3 onwards, 3 is the minimum, 3 is the infimum. So you'll see that you'll get the exact same sequence back again, and this is a non-convergent sequence. Therefore, the problem here isn't that you can't construct the sequence because it's not bounded below, but it's that you can construct the sequence, but the sequence doesn't converge. So this is an example of a sequence that doesn't have a limit inferior, but is bounded below.